music. You call that music. And in suspense out of the old west comes the most famous. Colorado Springs The Way It Was is a program produced by the Pikes Peak Library District that looks back at the history of this region through old films. If you have an older film that features the history of this area you would like shown on Channel 17, please call 531-6333, extension 1170. In this episode of Colorado Springs the Way It Was, we feature the films of Cheyenne Mountain School Superintendent, Dr. Lloyd Shaw. This is the second program in our series produced by historian Richard Merrill on the life and work of Lloyd Shaw. Lloyd Shaw was a Renaissance man and a brilliant educator who had the vision to document his innovative educational programs on 16 millimeter film during the 1920s and 1930s. During his 40 years with the district, he developed within his students a passion for learning and a deep appreciation for the wonders of nature that surrounded them at the foot of Cheyenne Mountain. Richard Merrill, the director of the Cheyenne Mountain Heritage Center, is our guide and narrator for this video tribute to Dr. Lloyd Shaw. Colorado Springs The Way It Was is underwritten by the Alexander Film and Video Company, which has provided film to video transfers for this series. Welcome to a view of Colorado Springs, the Cheyenne Canyon, and Cheyenne Mountain School in the 1920s, 30s, and early 40s. The video you are watching has been made from film shot by Dr. Lloyd Shaw. Shaw was principal of Cheyenne Mountain School from 1916 to 1951. A Renaissance man with a variety of passionate interests, he recognized early on the new technology of moving pictures, and as a result, he has given us a record of the Cheyenne region prior to the increased human growth following World War II. This is a scene from Cheyenne Mountain School looking west with Mount Cutler in the background. The wood shop or manual training was held in the school and the teacher in the white shirt is Frank Evans. The student is Bill Wyman. This is a scene from the chemistry class as taught by Mr. Ralph Minnell. On top of the school, Shaw had built an observatory with a telescope and here are scenes of students setting up the telescope and viewing. We are looking south onto the 
Broadmoor Mesa. And now we're looking west towards the mountains and the Gold Camp Road in the background. Across the street from Cheyenne Mountain School, Shaw had developed a nature preserve that is now the site of the Canyon Elementary School. But during these years of the 20s, 30s, and 40s, the nature preserve was an important facet of education at Cheyenne. Come to know the animals, the birds, the wildlife, the plants, the stream that went through that property. Here we see a woman bringing feed to the birds during the snowy season. These students are practicing archery on the west side of the school and in the background you see an, a glider going up onto the mesa to the northwest section of the school where students would ride that glider. Probably not a practice that's done in schools today. scenes from a track meet that was being held at the school. These are students uh, departing from the school bus uh, on a nature hike and nature study course. One of the practices at the school was to conduct camping trips each fall and spring. One weekend all the boys would go on a camping trip and another weekend all the girls would go. This was part of Shaw's philosophy on a total education.
There were many students who owned their own horses and would ride them to school, and during classes, the horses would then graze in surrounding area. But in addition, the school would also at times rent horses so that everyone had a chance to ride. This scene is the is Cheyenne Road prior to it being paved and here the horses are heading up North Cheyenne Canyon. Part of Shaw's educational philosophy was that all activities be open to all the students. This involved a certain amount of controversy when he first started the because after two years as principal of the school, he cut out football. He didn't feel that that was an activity in which all students could participate, and also he didn't like the school defining itself in terms of victory or loss over another school. And so practices such as track, horseback riding, archery, and so forth were open to all the students, and he saw this as fitting into the academic program and an understanding of the very region from which the students were living and were growing up. Shaw himself had grown up in Colorado Springs, had attended Colorado Springs Main High School, now known as Palmer High. He then graduated from Colorado College in 1913 and during those years had become a great lover of the mountains and of the, of the Pikes Peak region. He was a naturalist. He wrote a book called Nature Notes of the Pikes Peak Region. He was a consultant to the Smithsonian Institution on Ornithology. And as an educator, he did everything possible to convey his own passionate interests about this region and about the Rocky Mountains to the students who were with him.
The scene has now shifted from North Cheyenne Canyon and Mount Cutler to the area below Gold Camp Road in what is known today as Cresta and 21st Street. Each year, Lloyd Shaw would take the senior class to Rocky Mountain National Park. And here we see the old school bus and the students unloading the baggage and so forth and their visits to that great park. is Lloyd Shaw. In addition to visiting Rocky Mountain National Park on this trip, students also stopped at Lakeside near Denver for rides on the roller coaster. We see students stop for a picnic on their trip to Rocky Mountain National Park. 
These two students on the left are Buzz Robinson and Helen Haney. Viewing the students riding on top of the bus and on the hood and on the fenders of the car, one realizes that the requirements have changed over the years.
the 1930s, Lloyd Shaw, principal of Cheyenne Mountain School, became very interested in European folk dancing. As one might assume, the students also became interested in it because he was. They developed their own costumes, danced regularly at the school, and eventually they were invited to come to different events around the state and dance. Here we see students dancing on the veranda at the Broadmoor Hotel. Here we see students dancing at the nature preserve across the street from Cheyenne Mountain School in the area now used by Canyon Elementary School. Shaw also had hired a woman named Marianne Elser who helped develop the dance programs at Cheyenne. These are students dancing on the grounds outside of the school. Under the influence of Marianne Elser, a variety of different dance programs were held. These students are outside the kindergarten school. Clearly the influence of the dancing of the 1920s and 30s is seen here. that dancing was an activity that fit into Shaw's philosophy whereby students could participate 
in the activities that were going on, and it excluded no one. Such a pageant of this was held in the theater in the nature preserve. These two students are dancing on the veranda at, near the Broadmoor Lake. We are now outside the kindergarten on the school grounds. In the mid-30s, Lloyd Shaw became very interested in Western square dancing. He became a fine square dance caller, and square dancing replaced the European folk dancing at Cheyenne Mountain School. But as happened previously, the students became so proficient that they were invited to various events around the state to perform as square dancers. Eventually, by the early 1940s, the square dance team, composed of students from Cheyenne Mountain School, was traveling around the United States and putting on performances. Shaw himself became the foremost square dance caller in the United States. It was an activity that was limited not to students on the team, but everyone in the school could square dance. He called for dancing at noontime on Wednesday evenings. But the team itself practiced regularly and put on performances around the country and received a great deal of notoriety. During one summer vacation, Lloyd Shaw was invited to Hollywood where he was a caller for the movie Duel in the Sun, which starred Gregory Peck. The Colorado poet Thomas Hornsby Farrell once said about Lloyd Shaw, Put him in a ballroom, a stable, a tent, or any place where shoes can scuff the naked prairie, and his spirit instantly generates the spiritual environment for dancing. And if it seems to come from his jovial roars, his warm cadences, his special whispers, his smile, or the beat of his foot, it more truly comes from something deep in his character that causes him to behave this way. Long perspectives on America and beyond America his love of his own West, the land itself, and the people, their long faring from sea to sea. <laughs> 